When we talk about an acid-base neutralization equation or, or an experiment, okay, what we're actually adding here is we've got a substance that is acidic, okay, which means it's got a low pH, and we're adding, in order to neutralize that, a substance that is basic, which means it's got a higher pH. And in so doing, okay, you take the actual, on the pH scale, and actually here, let's do this. On the pH scale, if you had something that had a pH of 3, and you wanted to neutralize that, we know that a neutral pH is what? It's a 7. So if I add a substance that has a pH of 7 to that, and I add it to my acidic substance. What is going to happen to the pH? Well, it's going to rise, but it's not going to rise a lot. It is still going to be acidic. So when we want to neutralize or eliminate an acidic solution and bring the pH back up to a 7, do we have to add something that is only neutral or something that is basic? If we have to add something whose pH is much more basic, okay? If we add something whose pH is much more basic, then it's going to raise that pH so that it hits that neutral level. And we know of substances that are acidic and that are basic. And in doing this, we actually get a set sort of equation that we can actually pick out. So every time we try to neutralize an acidic substance, that means take a, a low pH and bring it up to 7, we have to add a base to our reactants. And every, every, every time that we mix an acid plus a base, so we take, let's say, vinegar, and we mix ba uh, baking soda to it. Vinegar is a, an acidic substance. Baking soda is a basic substance. When those two molecules come into contact with another, one another, a chemical reaction occurs, and the result ends up being a salt and water. And the reason is very simple for that. I'm going to write out an example equation here. If we look at something like hydrochloric acid, HCl, and we add it to a known base, like sodium hydroxide, okay, which is NaOH, we see our identifiers here. H means it's an acid, OH means it's a base. Do you see that? That is going to give rise to a salt and water. And here's why. If we look at these two molecules that are on the actual screen right now, HCl, how many atoms are there in that actual molecule? Two. There's a hydrogen and a chlorine. And if we look at NaOH, there's three, but we know that OH is a package deal here. They're stuck together. Hydroxide is the bonding of an oxygen and a hydrogen. Okay, it's pretty stable. So what ends up happening here, if we look at these two um, atoms and this molecule here as couples, okay, we look at them as couples, these guys break up, these guys break up. I know it's Valentine's Day, I'm sorry. But they break up, that's life. It happens. And here's what happens, okay? This ends up becoming an H, and this becomes a Cl by itself. They're not bound anymore in this reactionary mix. This becomes an Na, and then this becomes an OH. But they don't like staying by themselves, okay? They're, they're, they're people, or they're people. They're molecules that have the inability to stay by themselves. And what ends up happening is the... 
so or the chlorine here and the sodium bond together to give you NaCl, which is a salt, because you've got your metal and your non-metal. And then what's left? This hydrogen and this OH will combine to give you the H2O. Hydrogen plus oxygen and hydrogen give you H2O. There's two hydrogens there. That is why the recipe for an acid-base neutralization is always an acid plus a base equals a salt plus water. Drum that into your head because you know how to identify something that is acidic. It is going to have hydrogen in it. You know how to identify a substance that is basic. It will have a hydroxide in it. You know what salts are. They are a metal and a non-metal bound together. And when an acid breaks itself up and a base breaks itself up, you're left with your hydrogen and your hydroxide, HOH, also known as H2O. If we look at these two reactants, okay, we've got sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and we've got magnesium hy uh, hydroxide, which is Mg. OH. Okay? Now, like we said, these are two molecules. One is an acid, one is a base. When an acid-base neutralization occurs, the split occurs by the H between the H and, and this happens to be a polyatomic ion. Don't worry about it, but it's clumped together. Okay? And then here, it's nice and simple, it's already in a bracket for us, the OH. So what do we do? Well, this is a metal, so we assume that this is the non-metal. So that rearranges itself to be MgSO4, okay? And what are we left with? Okay, two of these, we're going to be left with two. H2O. Why two? Because you got two here and two there, right? Because that two is two hydrogens, two oxygens. So that's H2O, H2O. Okay? So that, that is an acid-base neutralization. Hard as it gets. Because not only is this not balanced, but you're missing one of your molecules. But if you look at this, what are some of the first things you can see in this reaction? And here's a hint. If you look at a reaction and you see that water is one of the products, divert your eyes right to the reactants to see if you've got a hydrogen in there and a hydroxide. Because then you know it's an acid-base neutralization. So if we look at this, one of the first things that we should see is the fact that there's actually a water here. Seeing a water in the product side of this equation, your mind has to start going to the fact that, oh, water, acid-base neutralization, because an acid plus a base equals a salt plus water. Acid plus a base equals a salt plus water. Okay, get that in your head. And when you see that water, go over to the reactant side and say, all right, do I have an acid here? Do I? What's my acid? HBr. HBr because it's got the H. What is my base then? CaOH. -H. So if I know what I know about acid-base neutralizations, I know that at some point, my acid here is going to break up, my base is going to break up, leaving those H's and OH's to fend for themselves and to make water. What salt am I left with here? Which one goes first? CA goes first. Why? Because it's a metal. So I end up with CA 
BR. Now, I don't know if this is balanced. I really don't think that it is. Okay, this would actually be balanced. Now, that's step one. You've identified the unknown. Now you've got to balance this thing. So we're going to do it like we would normally. We say, okay, how many H's do I have here? I've got three H's, one here and two here. How many BR's do I have? One. How many CA's? One. How many O's? One. One. How many, and I already did H. On this side, how many H's? Two. Only have two. How many BR's? One. Two. 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 BR's have two. CA. One. And O. You have one O. Now, where did this? Where did the BR two come from? Yeah. I made it up. I'm telling you that it should be like that. Oh. Okay. Which? Okay. Well, this, is this is just an example. This is a, an example of how do you balance an equation and find the missing molecule in an acid-base neutralization. So if I've got three. Hydrogen's over here and only two over here. Ooh, that's weird. Okay, maybe we'll come back to that. Let's do BRs. How do I get two BRs on my reactant side? Multiply by two. So I've got to add a two here. But if I do that, what happens? I now have two H's and two BRs. So what's my total number of BR? Two. two. What is my total number of H's now? Four. I've got two here and I've got two over Four. here. Four. So if I look over there, oof, what's going down here? And this should actually be, if I actually wrote this down properly, this should be a two. Whoops, there. Whoops, there. Okay, now what do I do on the other side? How do I make a balance? If I put a 2 over here, then that multiplies by that, and that multiplies by that. How many H's? Four. How many O's? <laughs> 4 and 4, 2 and 2, 1 and 1, 2 and 2, balanced. Okay, so this is an example of a problem where you not only have to finish the acid-base neutralization, but you also have to balance the equation. Is there, is there yes.